Ah, welcome once again. This is Rabbi Afol, and uh, this is the continuation of what we started the uh, angelic workings. The angelic workings. Uh, basically, my purpose is to teach how to task the various angels and archangels and then to assign them work for them to do for us. And that is my basic purpose. But we'll start, we are starting to look at the various type of angels and where we can get their, script, their scriptures from the Bible. Now, angels, uh, 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 there have been evidence of angels speaking. And they spoke to Jacob in a dream, as can be found in Genesis uh, 31 verse 11. And at times they appeared in human form, as uh, can be found in Genesis 18, 19 and 23. These are spiritual beings. Angels are spiritual beings. And that can also be seen in Hebrews 1, 14. And they are times described as glorious beings. They are glorious. In fact, they are glorious. Even to behold them, they are glorious. And that can be seen in Luke 2, verse 9, and Acts 12, verse 7. Then at times they are said to be surrounded by very powerful white light as can be found in Matthew 28, verse 3. The first angel that was mentioned in the Bible was uh, the angel who was tasked to uh, protect the Garden of Eden. And when uh, Adam and Eve sinned against God, and there was the need to drive them away, an angel was put in charge of the uh, Garden. And according to the scripture, he whirled a flame sword. That angel was a cherubim. He was a cherubim. And he was tasked to uh, protect the Garden of Eden. In actual fact, angels are pure beings. They, are, they, are, they, are, they, they, they do not have the propensity to do evil. The last time, uh, the, the final time uh, the angel was mentioned in the scripture, was uh, in Revelation 21, when you read the whole of Revelation 21, where the, uh, the final attestation uh, takes place. Now, Christian and Judaic beliefs say that there are hosts of angels. Some say there are legends. Some say there are numerals of them. And this can also be seen in Luke 2, verse 3, Matthew 26, verse 53, Hebrews 12, verse uh, 22. And then Revelation 5, verse 11. Then at times they are referred to as armies. Armies. As can be seen in Revelation 12, verse 7. And then Revelation 19, 11 to uh, 14. There have been other names that have been used to describe these beings. And uh, in Hebrew, they are known as the Malak. Malak is M A L A. KH because of my dialect, uh, dialectical uh, uh, differences. So I may not have pronounced it well, but at least I've spelled it. And uh, there are evidence in the Apocrypha and the Deutero canonical books of uh, descriptions of the various angels. Uh, it has, uh, they have been described as the sons of God. The sons of God. This can be found in Job 1, verses and Genesis. 6 verse 2. Then it's, they have also been described as sons of the Most High. Sons of the Most High, which also can be found in uh, Psalm 82 verse 6. Then they are also described as the Holy Ones or the Watchtowers or the Watchers. The Watchers. These names have also been ascribed to the angel. And this can also be seen in Daniel 4 13 and 17. Then they have also been described as the host of heaven. The host of heaven. This can also be seen in Joshua 5, verse 14. Then Isaiah 24, verse uh, 21. Isaiah 4, verse 21. Now, the, 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 the Christian church, the Christian church uh, initially accepted only four categories of these angels. And they were the seraphim, the cherubims, the archangels and then the angels. It was in the fourth century that the Christian church later on accepted that of 
the virtues, the powers, the principalities, dominions, and then the thrones, which in all made it nine choirs of angels, brought the number to nine. Initially, they accepted four, and then later on, they accepted the other five, which brought the angelic choir or the angelic ranks into nine different ranks. The rab rabbinical literature uh, categorizes the angels in the upper class and the lower class. The upper class and the lower class. Now we have the cherubim. In the cherubim, the scriptures to back that of the cherubim were Genesis 3 verse 24, Psalms 80 verse 1, Ezekiel 28 verse 14, Ezekiel 16, verse uh, Ezekiel uh, 16, 10 and then 2. And then we have the seraphims. The seraphims can be found in Isaiah 6, uh, 2 to 6. Then we have the thrones, the dominions, the principalities, the powers, and the virtues, which is Ephesians 1, verse 21, Colossians 1, verse 16. Then uh, the Apocrypha and the book of Daniel speaks of the archangels. Normally they were referred to as chief, chief angels. In Daniel, it, the archangel Michael was referred as chief, or the archangel uh, uh, Michael was referred as chief in Daniel. And in the Apocrypha, uh, that is in the book of Tobit, uh, it was Raphael that was referred to as such. And Raphael said in the book of Tobit that it was he who carries our prayers to the throne of grace. It was he who carries our prayers to the throne of grace. So the archangels also can be found <clears throat> in the scriptures. Uh, Michael can be found in Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And Jude uh, chapter 9. In Jude chapter 9, Danny, uh, Michael was seen arguing with Satan over the body of Moses. Over the body of Moses. Then Revelation 12, verse 7. Then Gab uh, Gabriel can also be seen in Daniel 8, verse 16. And then Luke 1, 19 to 16. In Judaism, in Christianity, and then in Islam, there are principal four cardinal points. And these cardinal points have various elements, which, which they accrue them to these archangels. Now in the east stood the archangel Raphael. Raphael governs the element of air. Then in the south, stood the archangel Michael. Michael governs the element of fire. Then in the west stood the archangel Gabriel. Gabriel governs the element of water. Then in the north stood the archangel Uriel. Uriel governs the element of earth. So that was how the four cardinal points were accrued to the various four archangels. Now most of the a religion talk about seven archangels. In truth, there are more than seven of the archangels. But here are the reverences that <clears throat> accrue them to, uh, that talks about the seven archangels. Now in Tobit 12 verse 15, the seven archangels were mentioned. In Enoch 81 verse 5, the seven archangels were mentioned. In Enoch 90, 21 to 22, then Revelation 8 verse 2, Revelation 15 verse 1, then Revelation 12 verse 9. Now we have the cherubim. The cherubim are four-winged uh, angels and they flank, they flank the throne of God. It is said that they keep on saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, till time uh, infinity. So they flank the throne of glory or the throne of God. And this can be seen in Psalm 80 verse 1, Isaiah 37 verse 16. In Islam, they refer to the cherubim as karabuyun. Karabuyun. You will forgive me my dialect, but it said that these karabuyun, uh, they are the ones who keep on praising Allah. They keep on praising Allah. Now we have the seraphim. The seraphim are said to have six wings. Six wings. And these six wings can be seen in Isaiah 6 verse 2 to uh, six. It said that two of them were used to cover their face, two covers their body, and two covers their face because they stand directly in front of the throne of glory or in front of uh, the supreme being of light. Then 
we have the guardian angels. The guardian angels are angels that guide us or they protect us. And this can be seen in Matthew 18, verse 10, 2 Kings, verse 6, and then uh, chapter 6, sorry, then Psalm 34, verse 7, Matthew 26, verse 53. And then uh, we also have ministering angels. Ministering angels, it means that they serve human beings. They minister unto us. When we still talk about the ministering angels, we're talking of them serving us because they are messengers of God and they are they serve us. In our local dialect, we call them abuafo. And in actual fact, the name is abuafo. The meaning of abuafo literally translated means helpers of mankind. So that is exactly what the angels they do. That's why we call them abuafo. Abuafo. Uh, in spite of all this, we still have certain angels that I will mention in person. We have certain fallen, bad, hostile, destructive angels. And these are also mentioned in Enoch 40, verse 7, Enoch 54, verse 6, Enoch 69, verse 4. And they fall under the power of the Luciferian angel. He leads them. And this particular, uh, this particular uh, uh, platform, it's not meant for that because I do not teach how to associate yourself with any bad angels. I am teaching how to associate with good angels and how to tax them or contact them so that they can be of assistance to us. Because these beings, they, they, they push our case in front of the throne of grace and they work directly with the supreme. They are not autonomous. They work directly with the, uh, being of, uh, the supreme being of light. And so, because they do not have any propensity to do evil, it is, it is opposite that you assign them works that are good in nature. Because you don't push them to do evil. Because even when there was, there was a rebellion in heaven, they never could bring up themselves to engage in evil. So they stayed away from evil. So do not assign evil work to them. As we proceed to our next course, you will begin to be able to associate or to tax or to contact. Let me tell you, these things are done in secrecy. So around us, even around you, the next person you see may be using them to enhance their own situation. Thank you for watching. This is Rabbi Afol from Ewutubo Jase, African Act Ministry. And uh, those of you who want to reach me on my cell phone, it's plus two three three two four three zero six seven five two two plus two three three two four three zero six seven five two two you can reach me on my cell phone if in case you want to uh, talk to me you are all welcome it is my desire to help uh, 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 my individuals to to rise up stay blessed